Okay, so there is a book tube book tag huh, going around YouTube lately that I have really been wanting to take part in. Um, I keep trying to find time, space, and privacy to actually film at home with my books. But that's just not going to happen. Uh, it's just not going to happen. There's just and, and don't get me wrong, this is not a complaint because I love my life and I love my family and I definitely love my little toot. Um, but there's just too much going on at home to film successfully right now. So we're just going to do it where and when we can, which is now on my lunch break. So <laughs> just, just let that go. I have written down questions in my trusty dusty okay it's not actually dusty but my trusty little diary journal whatever we're calling it these days and it is the mid-year book tag um now i am doing it based off of what is her channel hold on one second sarah oh god hafid sarah hafid Please tell me I'm not butchering your name, Sarah. I'm so sorry. Um, I will link her channel down below. I love her so much. And let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all. She is relatively new to my world. I watch a lot of booktubers, but I have never really like seen her channel before. But ever since I started watching her channel, I watch her channel a lot of the times when I get home from work and when I have my son sitting in my lap, like I'm feeding him or just chilling and spending time with him before I have to go to sleep. Um, he loves her. <laughs> he will just smile so big when we're watching her channel and I think it's the cutest thing in the world. She just gives off a very like soft, pleasant energy that I'm about these days. So I will link her channel down below. She did a mid-year book tag and added some questions to the original. I actually do not remember or know who did the original. So if y'all know who started the original mid-year book tag, can y'all tag them like in the comments or something or let me know who it is and I'll tag their channel in this video's description because I feel really bad not really knowing who started all of this. I, I, look, <laughs> could I investigate and find that out? You're damn right. Will I? No. I don't have enough energy or time during the day to like do things. <laughs> the fact that we're doing this right now is a miracle. So let's just, let's just go with it, shall we? Also, I apologize for any background noise like my fan being on and stuff like that. It's very hot and I have not come up with the money for a, a decent microphone yet. So y'all are just going to have to bear with me. Thanks. So first question, what is the best book I have read so far? Mm. Ooh. Now I originally had three books that were in the running um, and that was Fourth Wing, The Tear Smith, and Smithy. But I gotta give it to Smithy. I got to. It was so unique. It was so profound. It was so heavy hitting as far as emotional but so unsettling and creepy. Smithy by Amanda Desiree is by far the best book I have read so far. Second question, what is the best sequel I have read so far this year? Um, I had it down to like three, three or four different options. Originally I had Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros, wonderful. I had Crescent City 2 or 3. I liked both of them and I guess technically they're both sequels. Is that how that works? I don't know. And then Webster, which is the sequel to the Smithy book. And honestly, I gave it a tie between Iron Flame and Webster. I don't really understand why so many people hated Iron Flame. I thought it was wonderful. I didn't really feel like there was a discrepancy between the writing styles. I loved the characters. I didn't feel like the ending was so over the top tragic that it warranted hating the book like a lot of people did. I don't really get it. And then of course Webster, 
the Smithy duology has come to a close and I will definitely be rereading it at some point for sure. All right, the next question is, what are some new releases that I haven't read yet, but want to? So I assumed, obviously, that this meant new releases that were already out, because there is another question about anticipated releases that we'll, we'll talk about after this. So, so far, we have The Gathering by CJ Tudor. I'm excited about that one. Uh, the Church Beneath the Roots by Felix Blackwell. That's actually a prequel to Stolen Tongues, and I really liked Stolen Tongues, so I really want to read that one. Small Town Horror by Ronald Malfi. Um, originally, I had Horror Movie by Paul Tremblay on here, but I like that was before I even really read the synopsis of the book and after reading the synopsis of the book I'm not entirely sure I'm that excited about it or that it's for me so we'll see we'll see about that one um Incidents Around the House by Josh Mallerman definitely want to read that one I actually almost bought it the other day <laughs> um and then The Devil in Silver by Victor Laval please tell me I'm saying that man's last name right I really don't know um yeah don't know but th that's a decent list there's a lot of new releases that i have not read yet um i'm probably most excited about the gathering by cj tudor because it just sounds like something right up my alley Baruch. next question is what are some most anticipated releases for the second half of 2024 definitely got to put stay in the light by am shine on here that's the sequel to the watchers which i loved um, there's a book called The Rising by Chris Harrison that's on my wish list. Um, I Was a Teenage Slasher by Stephen Graham Jones. And on honestly, I'm going to put The Fury of the Gods by John Gwynn on here, even though I have not even started this series. I literally own The Shadow of the Gods and The Hunger of the Gods and have not read them. So my goal is to read those two books, preferably before The Fury of the Gods comes out, but I am very much an in anticipation for that book um next question what was the biggest surprise so far in 2024 the smithy duology like i know y'all are tired of hearing me talk about it at this point i know y'all are but the smithy duology by amanda desiree like i cannot rave about those books enough i just can't um who is a favorite new author for me? Amanda Desiree, of course, but also Rebecca Yaros, um, who wrote for the Fourth Wing books. I have never read any of Rebecca Yaros's other books. Um, I'm not entirely sure I want to because they seem like contemporary romance and that's just really not my thing, but definitely those two for sure. Sarah J Moss has already been in my top tier author list for about a year or so now, so far as this year those two are at the top newest fictional crush for 2024 let's see um well this is the first this year is the first time i have read through the crescent city series so we have rune danen danen rune dan danen danen him crown prince of the valbaran fey we love that also really dig and hunt Athalar. He got so much hate in the second and third books for some reason. I don't really know why. I really liked him, but whatever. Of course, we have Zayden Riorsen, of course. Um, and honestly, Lore Olympus, Hades. We love Hades. We love him so much. Okay, next question. What's a book that made me cry so far that I've read this year? Um, honestly, Crescent City 1 had me kind of fucked up a little bit, a little bit. I feel like Bryce went through the most emotional and mental transformation during the first book, and it showed. Um, Smithy and Webster both had me crying. Um, there, I read a novella earlier this year called Come Forth in Thaw. It was a very twisty, turny, um, horror novella, but it was so sad, and the ending of it, like, really fucked me up because it, it, it trigger warnings it has um death of a child involved and i was pregnant at the time and 
yeah, I wept for like two hours after reading that book. And The Tearsmith. The Tearsmith had me choking up, but not in scenes that you would think I would choke up. Honestly, this, the scenes where Nika had to kind of relive some of her trauma, those were the scenes that had me like crying. Anyway, next question. What are a book, what is a book or some books that made me happy? Well, I loved Crescent City one through three. I don't care what anybody says. So many people were like, Bleh. we didn't like those. They're not as good as Akatar and Throne of Glass. I loved them. Um, I do not feel like they were as for me as the Akatar books and I have not started Throne of Glass yet. So I can't really say which series is my favorite, but so far Akatar is still my reigning champion. Um, definitely loved Fourth Wing. I felt it was so good. At the end, of course, it gets very serious and it gets very um, sad. But that whole book was just really enjoyable for me. And of course, Lore Olympus, the newest volume that I've read this year, which I want to say is volume six, just had me so happy. Every time Hades and Persephone are together and they just have these, this cute little funny rapport with each other, it just makes me giggle out loud okay uh, next question what's the most beautiful book that i have bought or received this year mm. well i am currently reading when the moon hatched that's a very beautiful book but honestly the crescent city books those covers gorgeous they're just gorgeous like i, I don't care what you think about the books you can't deny those covers are gorgeous okay what books do I need to read by the end of the year? Well, of course, we've already discussed The Shadow of the Gods and The Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynn. Those are really the only ones that I really want to get read for sure before October even because that's when The Fury of the Gods comes out. Um, but I would like to get the entire series of Throne of Glass done before the end of this year, but we'll just, we'll see how it goes. Um, what books do you want to reread this year? Well, actually, I'm already rereading the Daughter of the Moon series by Lynn Ewing. Um, I've been talking about them on my last vlog and stuff like that. They're not great, but I'm mainly rereading them for nostalgia purposes because in my preteen years, they were like the most epic series ever to me. <laughs> um, this, this one's a little bit redundant because we already talked about some favorite new authors, and this is basically a, like just asking again who's your favorite author so far this year um i gotta give it to amanda desiree for the for the smithy books i just got to i just yeah um what are some books i've been putting off well imaginary friend by stephen jaboski how the fuck do you say his name anyway I got a good chunk of the way through this book, I want to say sometime last year, and then I ended up DNFing it because I just couldn't. It's very well written. It is a good book. It is a solid book. It just is not for me. And like I'm I'm split 50-50 right now between wanting to give it another go and just wanting to unhaul it at this point. Because it just doesn't feel like it's for me. It's not very enjoyable for me. Um, Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo I've been putting on the back burner. I have started it. I want to say I'm over 100 pages in at this point, And I will definitely finish that one because I want to know what happens with everyone. Um, but I've, I'm a little bit burnt out on the characters. I just feel like they're kind of stagnant right now. But maybe, maybe that will all change. And if, of course, I have been putting off all of my Stephen King books. I have a ton of Stephen King books that I have not read, like The Shining, Christine, The Stand. I don't actually think I own Salem's Lot yet or Pet Cemetery, but I want to read both of them. I own Christine, did I say Christine? That one, haven't read that one. Um, the Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. Like I have all these Stephen King books, but I've been putting them off since I read It like a year or two ago because It took so much out of me that I was very hesitant to start anymore. Um, all right, moving on. A book I enjoyed with mixed reviews. That would be Iron Flame for sure, but also like the Crescent City series. There were so many mixed reviews about them. There were so many people hating on them completely, and I, I just really enjoyed them. Of course, I didn't have high expectations anyway. I was just along for the ride, and the ride was fun. Okay, it was fun. Um, 
What's a series I want to finish before the end of the year? The Throne of Glass series. The Throne of Glass series. But also the Daughter of the Moon series. I would like to go ahead and wrap that up since I only have like three more books left in it to read. Um, next question. What are some five star predictions? Ooh. Well, the Throne of Glass series, um, just because literally all of Sarah J. Moss's series from me have gotten a five star. Uh, even Crescent City. I really enjoyed it. I really liked it. It wasn't quite as soul shattering as the Akatar series for me, but it was still really good and really well done. It was almost like a performance. So I'm, I'm assuming the Throne of Glass series will probably fall in the same in the same way. <laughs> also, I feel like I'm probably going to enjoy The Gathering by CJ Tudor. I feel like that's going to be a five-star read for me. I feel like Stay in the Light by A.M. Shine, once I get my hands on it, it's going to be a five-star read just because The Watchers was for sure. And I kind of feel like The Devil in Silver by Victor Laval will be a five-star read for me just because it sounds like it's a little bit up the alley of like psychological horror, which is like my thing. Um, next question. Do I think I will reach my reading goal for the year and am I going to change it? Yes, I think I'm going to reach my goal and no, I'm absolutely not going to change it. <laughs> I have too much stuff going on this year. I'm not going to add any more stress. Plus, I want to be able to bask in the fact that I succeeded my goal however far I get. You know what I mean? Does that even make sense? I'm sorry, I'm kind of speed running through this, you guys. I only have so long before I have to stop filming for the day. Um, are there any new goals for the rest of the year? I want to utilize my new TBR cup. Okay, I haven't shown it to you guys yet. I'll probably show it to you in the next vlog that I do. But I have this like little Halloween themed trick or treat mug. And I hate drinking drinks out of it because it's one of those mugs that the inside has all these little like creases and crevices in it and cleaning it is just a bitch and a half. But I love it for decoration purposes. So I typed up all these different creative categories, prompts, if you will, and I folded them up and I threw them in this cup and I have now designated that as my TBR cup. And the whole point of like picking prompts from it is to try to keep my reading diverse so I don't continue to burn myself out in certain genres because I do that really bad. I'll get stuck in horror for a while until I burn myself out and then not want to go back for a year. I'll do the same thing with fantasy or romance or what have you. So I'm trying to keep my reading diverse. Um, which books did I DNF for this year? I actually have not DNF'd any books this year so far. So that's good. And last but not least, which books disappointed you the most? Honestly, it was a couple of manga <laughs> and it was called Wolf Girl and Black Prince. I bought volume one and two and they were very disappointing. Um, I don't know if the series gets better. If you've read the series and it does get better, let me know and I will try to push through. But I read the first two volumes. I usually do that with manga. I'll read the first two or three because sometimes it just takes a while to pick up. But I bought the first two, I read them, and they just sounded so cute. And there were moments that held so much promise. But at the end, they just fell so flat. And it was like bully romance, but like, it didn't hit right, if that makes sense. That sounded so abusive, but <laughs> it didn't hit right. It just kind of hit offensive in a lot of ways. So maybe that was just my headspace when I was reading it, but... But yeah, so that is pretty much it for my mid-year book tag. I know a lot of people, a lot of creators have been adding their own questions and stuff to it. I'm just going to leave it at that because I don't have much time or brain capacity to come up with new questions. <laughs> but yeah, I'm hoping to put this video up and out before my June vlog. So there will be some references here and there to books that y'all probably won't see until that June vlog. But Hope y'all are having a great time, great life, and I will catch y'all in the next video.